Okay, can we talk burnout? Clients who come to me with burnout tend to have a few core beliefs in common. Core beliefs are the stories that we were born into or raised with that we may not consciously believe in, but that are going to subconsciously play out in our lives unless we're actively choosing to change what we believe. An example of that is white supremacy. It's not something that most people would actively say that they believe in, but it's a core belief in our society. And so if we're not actively trying to change that, it's going to be under the surface, kind of playing out in the way that we act. What are the most common beliefs that I see in people that show up with burnout? There is a hierarchy in humanity and some people are better than others. And this is the biggest one. This belief is the story behind white supremacy, behind capitalism, behind cisnormativity and heteronormativity and sexism and all the isms. <laughs> behind it all, all the things we don't like, all the things we want to change. Behind that is this belief that there's a hierarchy, that some people are better than others, whether it's because of how they look, how much money they make, what they do. I mean, there's just so many things that we judge and value over other things. This belief of hierarchy can lead to perfectionism, anxiety, feelings of not being enough, always working harder to prove yourself, feeling like you're behind. Really, this one belief leads to all the other beliefs. So if you wanna to go to the source, just start there. The second belief is that worth is dependent on how much you achieve and rest must be earned. We live in a society where this is taught from an early age. No rest for the weary is a common expression telling us that no matter how tired we are, we have to keep going. And if we're living in a belief of hierarchy that some people are better than others, then we have to keep going. We have to achieve more. We have to, we have to be more valuable because we're living in a society that believes in hierarchy. And this belief affects all of us in deep ways, but I found with the clients who've come to me that it does affect certain groups in different ways. My clients who come from immigrant families have been taught the story of the American dream. And so they've been taught that they have to achieve at all costs and that it's something that they are responsible for and that they have to achieve for their families. So this leads to a lot of burnout, a lot of feeling like they have to do it all on their own and not be able to ask for help, which just leads to exhaustion. And that leads to the third core belief, which is I have to take care of everything myself. A society where we're in a hierarchy rather than in a circle of community, things have to be done perfectly. If not, you might get knocked down in the hierarchy and that's the underlying fear. We have to keep achieving, keep working harder, keep going because if you're not at the top, you might be at the bottom and you don't want to be there. And the only way to do things perfectly, we think, is to do it ourselves. And yeah, as a mom, I feel this immensely. <laughs> and I have to work really hard to fight this story. Otherwise, I end up doing everything myself and then resenting everybody and feeling burned out. Now, if we lived in a circle of community where everyone's individual and unique skills and abilities and the things that come naturally to them were appreciated and honored, then it would be easier to trust others to be part of the process. But when we're pitted against each other, as is only natural in a hierarchy, then trust and collaboration and community building are much harder to come by. Core belief number four, and I think this is one that we talk about with women a lot, but I see it in men too, especially dads. And this is that we have to take care of others' needs before our own. We have to put everybody else first and we are kind of the martyr, right? the irony is that nobody else really benefits from our sacrifice on the surface it might look like it if I am doing let's say I'm doing all the dishes and I'm doing all the cleaning up and I'm doing all those things that you do for your kids 
that might seem on the surface like it's benefiting them. They might feel like it is, but it's not really, right? Because they're not learning to be a part of the community. They're not learning to be a part of the family. They're not learning the things that they're going to need to do as they get older. One of my favorite affirmations when I'm doing my own meditation is what I do to myself, I do to others. And what I do to others, I do to myself, which just helps to remind me that we're all a community and that ultimately there is no separation. When we sacrifice our own needs and our own joy, then what we give to others is kind of laced with frustration and repressed anger. And so what I'm doing to myself is sacrificing myself, is feeling tired, is feeling angry, is feeling frustrated. I'm also doing to others. I'm giving that frustration to others as well. So when we take care of our own needs and really come into this world from a place of self-love and joy and compassion, then we're putting that out as well and we're giving them and we're giving that out to others as well. The fifth core belief is that who I am and what I have to give isn't enough. And you can see how that goes back to hierarchy. You know, you're always trying to be perfect. You're always trying to be the best. And so you're constantly feeling that who you are is not enough. This leads you to live your whole life with this constant undercurrent of anxiety where you're going about your day, you're doing your things, you're going to sleep at night, but underneath that, there's just this feeling of like, I'm not doing enough, I'm not enough, I have to do more. There is very little peace when you're in that state. And number six is, there isn't enough time to do all the things and I have to do all the things now. So my clients will often go back and forth between wanting just deep rest and to hide under the covers and just relax and then wanting to do all the things. They're very ambitious people. They want to do it all, have it all, go all the places and just really live life to the fullest, which is amazing, right? We all want that, but there is a balance. This belief goes back to all the other beliefs before that. I'm not enough. Who I am is not enough. There's a hierarchy. I have to be perfect. And so there's this general anxiety that keeps them in this state of feeling like, oh, well, I have to. I have to do all the things. I have to achieve more. I have to experience more. But this anxiety around wanting to do all the things tends to lead to doing too much and not actually being present for any of those things. And for some clients, and I have definitely experienced this myself as well, there is an actual fear. There's an underlying fear of being present. There's this tendency to want to dissociate and so they try to do all the things, keep themselves busy, not allow themselves to rest, not allow themselves to actually be present in their lives. Either because if they're present, they might see things they don't like, or it makes it harder because they feel so deeply the love for the people around them, for what they do, for you know this world, that it makes it hard for them knowing that they're gonna leave it someday. And really this is kind of another tangent, but that, that fear of death can keep people from wanting to be present, which leads them to try to do too much because they, they're just afraid of being present in the moment and really like feeling and being in this world and loving. So I wanna ask you if you relate to any of these core beliefs. I'm guessing you probably do if you clicked on this video. You probably do if you're a human. <laughs> and what might be different if you were to start exploring how to shift these beliefs, how to shift them for yourself? The outside world is what it is, but shifting them for yourself really makes a difference. It can be a really scary thing to push back against the beliefs that your family and that society have raised you with. But it can also be a really beautiful, loving, and generative thing, something that 
you know, as you're doing for yourself, you see it rippling out because you start treating the people around you differently. You start showing up in the world differently. And so as you're changing these beliefs inside of you, it starts to change them outside of you as well. And I have a series of meditations called Stop the Burnout Cycle. And it's five meditations that help you to look at what your own beliefs are that are leading you to burnout. So I will leave a link in the description box below to that series. And if you want to go even further, I will also leave a link to my website so you can learn more about working with me. And I work with all my clients over the phone or over Zoom, so I can work with you from anywhere. All right, if this was helpful, give it a like, leave a comment, subscribe, do all those good things. I share lots of meditations and tips and inspiration, things to help you learn how to change your stories and change your life.